So I live stream virtual reality programming for WebVR sometimes, and it's pretty fun live because people in the chat will make suggestions that I sometimes use and help me catch bugs, and it's always fun to see something be created for virtual reality live. But to make it more archivable and more watchable, not live, I decided to try editing it down and posting it on the web. So here is the edited version of yesterday's live stream. So here I am in my field of peachy rings. Each has each starts with a random position, random spin, random velocity, getting updated every frame. And uh, oh, let me get the in camera view. So whenever I press the trigger, I'm creating a new ring that is also at a random velocity and a random spin. So if we want to feel like we're throwing a peachy ring, shooting a peachy ring, tossing a peachy ring, we have a couple options as to what velocity we would rather give these rings than just random. Uh, one option might be we could be keeping track of the position over time of the controller. And if we take the position over time, then uh, we can, you know, turn that into a velocity to give the peachy ring. So it would be uh, going like how I flung it. That, that would be like the calculus route. Um, another way we could do it is just have it shoot uh, maybe straight um, between where you're looking and the controller. So the vector math route would be we're going to take the position of the headset and the position of the controller, um, draw a line, draw a vector, and then we're going to take that vector and add that uh, or some scaling of it to the peachy ring. Another way to give a non-random velocity would be you take the just where the controller is pointing and um, set the peachy ring going in that same direction. I guess chat, let me know which one you want to do. We're going to do vector math. So here we are in a drawing program that we've been working on for the last week. And the reason we're here is just so I can kind of draw out and figure out what we're going to need to do. We have some axes in the world. We're not exactly sure what they are. Um, Right, there's going to be, this one I think is X, it might be Z. Right, we have our, our Z, again, not sure, let me get a smaller um, Z, maybe. Um, definitely the vertical one is Y, and again, yep, not drawing fast enough. Right, but that's basically what we're working with. And then we have um, we have a special point zero. So we're going to look at the headset position. The headset position is going to be pink. So the idea is that if we want to shoot the peachy ring in a direction, I'm going to look at uh, where my head is, which is going to be some position related to zero. Um, so that's where my head's going to be. And then my hand's going to be somewhere. Just gonna make that green. Right, so both of these are gonna be some sort of vector. And we want the peachy ring to just keep going that way. So let me get orange for peachy ring. Gonna draw a little ring going that way. So basically we just want this. We just want this vector. Um, we're gonna take that and we're gonna add it to our peachy ring so that it just goes in that direction. And it'll be scaled so that instead of like jumping that far, it'll just move a little bit in that direction. So how do we get this number? We've got this one, we've got this one, and if we've got this and this, when we want um, what we want, the yellow one actually, it's gonna be this, doo doo doo. We're going to take our handset position and we're going to subtract the uh, headset position and that'll get us this yellow thing. And then we'll have it. That is what we want. Hand minus 
head will be the velocity we want to give to our PG ring scaled. So here's where we um, set the position of our PG ring. And now let's uh, give new ring uh, a new velocity. So the ring's velocity, I think I just call it velocity. Uh, which PG ring? I guess it's P mod peach number equals new three dot vector three. Here's where we're going to have x, y, and z of our vector. What do we want? Here, controller's j. That's the position of the hand controller that we're currently looking at. And 0 is x. So first I'm just going to put in the uh, position of the hand controller for x, y, and z. 0, 1, and 2 are x, y, and z. And then we want to subtract uh, camera.position.x. I'm going to move this over a little to the side so I can scroll it out so you can see what I'm even doing. Minus camera.position.y and minus camera.position.z. So what this is doing is subtract subtract headset pause from uh, hand pause. And then we need to scale that. So in case we have to do that, let's just put all of these in some parens so that we can do it by times uh, shoot scale. And remind me to go up and do shoot scale times shoot scale, comma, comma, no comma, parens are happy friends. What variable was I adding? Someone can remind me. Mm, something to do with scaling. Ooh, okay. So we want var scale something shoot scale equals one for now. Actually, we should probably start at like much smaller than one. Um, for scaling shooting vector. All right, so what are the chances this works on the first try? And I think it works, actually. I think it works surprisingly well. Very, very important. This is a bad idea. I probably need something that uh, decreases the momentum over time, and that is easy to do. So the spin we're not going to mess with. I mean, we could do something like we want to make them spin faster when we they shoot faster or something, but I don't really care right now. Uh, here's where we update each PG ring's position by adding the velocity. And in theory, we should be able to vector math this all together, but we're doing all the x, y, and z components separate because reasons. Um, so here we're going to update the velocity. A lot of things we could do here. Um, velocity, and we're going to be dealing with uh, velocity i dot x, velocity i dot y, and velocity i dot z. So what do we want to do to these velocities in time? We could just have the velocity decrease. Like say velocity dot y uh, was decreased by some small amount. That's not really that small, maybe. I don't know. If uh, velo or let's just do it by gravity. Now let's um, our gravity equals 0 0.01. So this would have gravity, and maybe if we want a little air friction, then so this will always make them be falling down. Uh, so that's easy. If we want them to always be slowing down, then we have to know whether we're dealing with a positive x or a negative x, which is why I would rather just multiply them by something smaller instead of uh, subtracting a number, because sometimes we would want to actually be adding a number. So we can times equal uh, 0 0.9. Actually, uh, let's call it air friction. Friction. Um, 
times equals friction. And let's just make that a variable. Var friction equals 0 0.99. And that is going to be air friction. And I guess this is 1 for none, uh, 0 for infinite. Just so I can remember when I'm tweaking these numbers. I think I'm going to want to get rid of this bouncing on the boundary thing. But I might want to add it back in later, but maybe scale up the bound. For now, we're just going to let them fly away. Come on. Friction. Oh, great. We can tell because all of the peachy rings fell because of gravity. Uh, and let's see what happens when we shoot more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gravity seems a little high. Do we maybe agree? Good thing it is a variable. We can just immediately change it in the console. So gravity... Right now it's 0 0.01. Um, let's set it to 0 0.001. Okay. More reasonable. Uh, and now maybe the friction is too high. Let's see what happens if friction... This is with no friction. Air friction. And maybe it's fine. I kind of miss being in a world of bouncing peachy rings. Oh, this is important. Why didn't I do this before? So right now we're just shooting peachy rings out into the blank blue nothing. What we really need is a floor. Uh, so first, what did we tweak? Gravity is going to be lower. Shoot scale is going to be higher. You know what I might just do <laughs> is uh, steal the um, skybox and floor from the drawing program, which was stolen from one of Emily's projects. Here we go. <laughs> peachy rings. Aha! Uh, where's my peachy ring shooter? Here we go. And now that we have a floor, a lot of things get easier. We can make them stop when they hit the floor. Since we know where the floor is, we know where our peachy rings are, all we have to do is see if our peachy ring is at y equals floor, or you know, y is less than floor, whatever floor height, and make them stop. This Peachy ring position updates. So we only want to update this if they're in the air. Check if it's hit the floor. If um, if ring i dot position dot y. We only want to update stuff if it's above the floor. Only if it's above the floor. So. If ring i dot position dot y is greater than floor dot position dot y, then we're gonna update all of this. Do 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 do. You can all tab in. Whereas if it's hit the floor, it's just gonna not update. It's not gonna move. Or maybe they should bounce off the floor. Ooh, that is a good plan. Chat, you are smart. All right. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna try. Wait, this is stop at floor. First, we're gonna try this, and then of course they're PG rings. They should bounce, and there should even be a bounce animation when they bounce. Um, push. Okay. Yes. Yes, they will bounce. First, we will try having them just stop at the floor. Then, obviously, they're gonna bounce off the floor. I don't even know what I was thinking. <laughs> so now all of our peachy rings are stuck in the floor. And when we shoot them... They get stuck in the floor. We shouldn't be on a floor, we should be on like a giant cake covered in frosting so that when they land, I'm thinking something soft. Because you want the peachy rings to land a little bit embedded in it for it to make sense. So I think if we were on, like, yeah, a giant cake. All right, we can make a special cake that they get stuck in. And the rest of the floor will bounce. Oh, jello. 
We need jello and cake. We need all sorts of surfaces. I guess what we should really be doing is like an else. And then here's where we want um, a nice good old. Uh, so if it is below floor height, we're just going to velocity i dot y times equals negative 1. Get rid of our boundary. So this is like if it's at or below. Oh, wait. I just want to make sure we don't accidentally like trigger this a million times in a row and let our PC ring not go anywhere. Because we want to make sure that it ends up positive in the end. So we just could. We're going to assume it's negative if it's falling down. So just to make sure that uh, we don't accidentally, like, the PT ring gets stuck below the floor, and now it's going to be bouncing and switching velocity infinitely. We're just going to be, let's do uh, velocity i dot y equals uh, math dot absolute value of velocity i dot y. Right? That should just make sure it flips to positive and goes up. I think that's a better, more robust solution. None of you are bouncing. So, of course, I forgot the part where you update the position. We want to update the position whether or not we've hit the floor. Um, Okay. Much more reasonable. This looks correct. This looks... Where's my mouse? This looks right and proper in every single way that one could imagine. Yep. But this is good. I can live with this. Uh, now I want to mess with the air friction to, I don't know, I do like these very trampoline PT rings. I am curious as to what it would look like if we had more air friction. But this is making me happy. I feel like my friction is not working. Did I take out the part where I do friction? Oh, cause friction, I didn't do, I didn't do friction on the Y component. I don't know why I did not do friction on the y component. Um, okay, velocity i dot y minus equals gravity. Um, that's all great, but I want velocity i dot y then to be times equaled with friction. And now let's do friction. If friction equals zero, they stop in midair. If friction equals 0 0.5, well, now they're all slow. Um, I guess the friction, they're not going to stop in midair as long as gravity is enough to overcome friction. <laughs> so much friction. <laughs> so let's make the friction. 0.99. Huh, and now I feel like there should be more friction in the y direction than in the x and z direction. Or I guess when it just hits, when it hits the ground. Friction equals 1.1. You're right. We should try setting it to more than one just so we can see them bounce higher and higher and higher forever. One point, I gotta do 1.01 just because 1 1.1 is uh, a lot. Yep. I wanna just like. In fact, even just 1.1 is a lot. Aw, this is fun! 
I like this. That was a good idea, chat person. And this is why everyone makes first person shooters, because they are so easy to make a bad one. I mean, the terrible thing is that, like, I just really want a target. And then I'm getting way too close to just actually creating a first person shooter, which is not my goal. The world has so many more beautiful things than uh, just creating shooting stuff. So I want to know what can I do with this that is for the increasingness of human self expression and our ability to be ourselves. And like making pizza rings bounce all over a giant jello cake sounds like very much helping humanity to reach all of our goals and dreams. But mostly this was just an exercise in getting hand controls working and um, doing a little bit of very simple vector math. And I especially like that I could demonstrate the vector math in the uh, drawing program that we made in the past week. So that was satisfying. And I like that the PT rings bounce. Really, it just it does need a new texture. We need a texture. And we might have to just make it in paint. I made out of jello. What color jello is jello? Is it green? It might be green. It might be green with oh, why are we doing this? This is gonna be awful. Big jello, jelloy jello. There's like some murky fruit somewhere where like no one is quite sure what it is. Oh yeah, this is a beautiful texture. That is, that's what green jello looks like. I'm pretty sure. I'm gonna save it as floor two. A cake is kind of like a creamy color with some um, nice shiny cake, cake shine. That's what cakes look like. I've seen them before. All right, save that. Bar cake texture is gonna be a new three dot image util. Now we have a cake. Scene dot add cake. Just to make sure there's a cake somewhere. Where is my cake? I want a cake. I made a cake. dot position is that zero it exists mm, that does not seem to have been the problem oh wait maybe I was just inside it maybe it was there the whole time and just my head was inside it look at that lovely cake whoa they're everywhere uh-huh they have so physics Yep. Ooh, bouncy physics! Did physics to it. It has bounce! Whoa, they also shoot. I wanted to make the floor into green jello, but I don't understand what I'm doing wrong with my green jello. Position. Cake dot position dot set two comma two. Oh wait. Uh let's make y be floor floor dot position dot y. I think the center of the cake is in the middle of the cake and not at the bottom of the cake. So we need like floor dot position dot y uh, plus, I don't know, 0 0.25. And then if we hit the cake, if ring i dot position dot, what's, is it like distance to? Distance, distance to cake dot position is less than a cake radius, then we do stuff. Uh, first let me make cake radius be a thing. Um, if ring i dot position dot distance to cake dot position is less than cake radius, then we want, we want to just make the velocity zero. Or maybe we just not move it. And then everything else is just else ifs, right? Presumably you hit the cake. You hit the cake. Okay, and now is the part where our cake should be round. 
Round cake, round cake. How does round cake? Here's my cake. So we want a cylinder. Cylinder? Is that how you spell cylinder? Okay, well, let's see if it works. So there's my cake. Um, it's over there. It's very bright. I guess it's right under the light. And um, that's interesting. It causes skiing PT rings. Uh, did I forget to, I guess I didn't put the position thing in the other loops. magic cake. I think I should eventually make a magic cake, but for now, I will not make a magic cake. You're in this end. All right. Yeah. So the ring dot position dot X, this is the problem. This is why we can't just hit the cake and that's it. Cause this is still updating no matter what. So really this should just be setting the velocity to zero. Well, zero. Velocity y equals zero. Velocity z equals zero. Properly. There. <coughs> A cake radius is too high, but you get the idea. Cake radius. Right now it's one. Let's make it half as big. Immediately those will all fall down. The collision is a sphere, because that's just super easy. Uh, which means that around the roundy cake, it's fine. Um, it means the top of the cake is going to be a little more moundy than is realistic for tossing peachy rings into a giant cake. But I think that's okay. I'm not like super picky about that. Oh, we can like bounce into the cake. Very good. All right, I'm pretty happy with uh, the work I've done today at my job. That is what we did. We can shoot a cake with peachy rings and I feel like this was very important. So, farewell. After the live stream ended, I made a few quick tweaks to get that very important jello ground texture working and put a cherry on top of the cake, which is important, both because it is a cherry and because it makes the cake a little closer to a sphere, so better for collision purposes. In previous streams, we set up a virtual reality world and we just got hand controls working, so my goal in this live stream was to use hand controls in a new way and try doing some vector math and explaining that on the live stream. The end.